Well, in central New York, where we're located now, the first discovery in the Cuga Lake watershed was in August of 2011, where a student aboard the Cuga Lake floating classroom made a discovery during the normal course of monitoring and sampling. Uh, they realized that this plant didn't look very much like any of the native species, and it looked suspicious. So after confirming that it was indeed hydrilla, then a more extensive delineation was conducted within the Cuga Inlet, and they found that the infestation had spread to multiple areas within the inlet. So after the initial discovery of hydrilla in the Cuga Inlet in 2011, the Hydrilla Task Force was formed to spearhead the local management operations. The volunteer monitoring effort to look for hydrilla started right away in 2011 after it was first found in Cuba Inlet. And we started working with the state, with the county, and with local experts, started holding information workshops so that people could identify hydrilla and look for it along the shoreline. They were, we had people out, local folks, looking that fall and then held workshops that winter. And so um, in the years since, we've got a lot of people who are hydrilla hunters out looking for hydrilla along the shoreline. In the fall of 2011, an initial response using the herbicide Aquathol K, active ingredient endothol, was utilized in a portion of the Cuga Inlet. This allowed the hydrilla task force to control the vegetative growth of hydrilla above the sediment, thereby clearing the waterways so boats, recreation, swimming, all of those activities could still continue. And it also helped to prevent the possible fragmentation of the plant and its spread into other portions of the inlet as well as the southern end of Cuba Lake. New York State has never tackled this weed in this way usually don't do eradication projects. Um, it's on a larger scale than most of the efforts. It basically was a, a first time ever effort. So we had to bring a lot of people in. There are a lot of aspects. So there's, in the end, there, there were several teams. There was an education team to let the public know what was going on, um, build support and share results and, and um, ways to prevent spread. There's a, a management team which worked with researchers to come up with the best approaches and most likely to succeed. Um, there was a local task force, and those were sort of, that's, in, that's still a role that I play, and we're sort of the implementers. Once we've made a decision on, on what we're gonna do in any given year, there's just nuts and bolts that have to happen, you know, uh, uh, traffic issues, parking issues, access issues, that sort of thing. And then there's a, a state task force because even though there was no regulatory body that could lead the effort, there are plenty of rules that have to be met. <laughs> um, and so we had to continue to work at the state level and federal, um, federal partners as well are on that state task force for funding and, um, and any kind of regulatory hurdles we had to overcome. So in the uh, uh, Cougar Inlet, Fall Creek, and uh, in Cuga Lake, the southern end of Cuga Lake, we're using a system where we uh, draw out a grid system in meters and we are sampling uh, at the uh, very least every 50 by 50 meters uh, in, in the inlet in Cuyuga Lake with a rake toss method where we throw out two rakes, pull them uh, 10 meters along the bottom of the lake and then pull them up and evaluate the aquatic plants around there. We record all species that we find as we're looking for any effects not only on uh, the invasive species hydrilla that if we could if we're looking for that it's like looking for a needle in a haystack out in Cuba Lake so that's the primary thing we're doing is looking for hydrilla to identify where it is but we're also uh, evaluating the effect that any herbicide that we're using in the inlet or Fall Creek or the southern end of Cuba Lake may have on other species in the lake. We are uh, also uh, doing extensive monitoring with the sediment, as I mentioned before, and that uh, we are using uh, a post hole digger and we are sampling hundreds of samples at historic locations since 2011 where we had high densities of uh, hydrilla tubers and we're evaluating those areas to watch the depletion of tubers from the sediment, which is kind of our ultimate goal is to get that down to 
uh, zero or as close to zero as possible and feel more confident about eradication. So after the initial treatment season in 2011, efforts continued, planning continued over the winter of 2011 and into spring of 2012. The first full treatment season, utilizing a combination of herbicides, Aquathol-K, as in 2011, again, that is the contact herbicide, active ingredient is endothol, and then a second herbicide, the low-dose systemic herbicide Sonar, active ingredient Fluoridone, was also used in 2012. Now this combination treatment allowed the task force to address the vegetative growth of hydrilla above the sediment during the beginning to middle of the season. After that initial application, which killed the hydrilla biomass above the sediment, the sonar application continued through injection systems, specialized injection units that were strategically placed on portions of the inlet to drip the sonar product into the system at a sustained dose over a sustained time period. Now this allowed for better overall coverage and treatment of the plant. The sonar product would then come in and address any regrowth, any possible late germination or regrowth of the hydrilla plant. This sonar treatment continued on through fall or October of 2012. This combination treatment continued. Similar protocols were followed in 2013 and 2014. Adjustments were made to the overall treatment area and certain zones were provided coverage with the different products, but the same management protocol using the combination treatment was utilized in 2013 and 2014 with very successful results in the Cuga Inlet.